Hello, welcome in, welcome in. Happy Saturday. Hope everybody had a great 4th of July. Welcome to Best Ball Brawl. Let's get after it. Gonna give a few minutes for some people to trickle in. And uh, let's get into best ball. What is best ball? Let's start. This is my first episode of Best Ball Brawl. So uh, I would love to just start with what is best ball and uh, why I like it, why it's a fun uh, thing for fantasy managers to try during the off season. Good exercise, much different than regular fantasy football. Uh, so there's two main platforms that there, it's played on. That's Underdog and DraftKings. Uh, and I personally prefer Underdog. Uh, but DraftKings is good, but they're different because... Um, <clears throat> sorry. Underdog is half point PPR and DraftKings is full point PPR. And they are three wide receivers and only two running backs and still one flex. So there is a lot of dependence on drafting strong wide receivers. Duval. Very good. Love that. Welcome in, Ryan. Um, so yeah, you're going to have a dependence on wide receivers because this is a three wide receiver format. Tonight we are doing the pit bull. We're burning, we're setting 20 bucks on fire. We're going to do it. Um, we're going to have some fun. Now, the reason I like this one is compared to the other, their flagship contest, Best Ball Mania, there's over 670,000 entrants. It's a lot of entrants. Uh, and the pit bull only has 28,000. So just by entering this, you sort of have a one in 28,000 chance. Now, in my opinion, the reason I love Best Ball is you can really make picks that allow you to have a better chance than the rest of the pack and in increase your odds. So there's 10 entry max on this pit bull. You can get up to um, $200 invested. First place gets $100 uh, K and there's over 500 in prizes. I absolutely love what Underdog has been doing by um, changing to a 50, 15 second pick as an option. That is just mind blowing. If you've ever done a 15 second pick, um, then you know that that is very exhilarating. We're going to do a 30 tonight so we can talk through everything, not rush the decisions. And then there's also eight hour picks. So the long time to pick your team. So uh, I love that you have these options. 15 is super exhilarating. 30 is enough to make a smart decision and keep moving. And then eight hours per pick. You, these are the span of a couple of days. Uh, and there can be some, it leaves more time for some really intelligent moves to be made, where sometimes in these shorter clocks, people are, are rushed. So hopefully you don't see me get rushed too much tonight, but it does happen. And in $20 entries, man, that's, these are the big boy leagues where uh, you're playing with sharp players who you can see some runs on quarterbacks, runs on tight ends, and it can be really tough. So you want to get out in front of that where you're not, you know, stuck with Baker Mayfield and Bryce Young as your two quarterbacks. But just reading what the field is doing in between your picks is important, right? Whether you have 15 seconds or eight hours. So tonight we're going to do a 30. Like I said, um, it's going to be, I'm going to light $20 on fire and we're going to see what happens. Now the score is 18, there's 18 rounds uh, in the draft, I meant to say. And so you can pick 18 players. 
Again, these are the prize win outs. And weeks one through 14, all your rosters, the best scores from each player gets added up into the lineup. And if you make it into the semifinals, that's in the uh, finals, this is where the money gets made. And so your guys really have to do really well in week 17 to actually make money. That's something that a lot of people don't know, um, but very true. So one thing I'm going to do as well, and I'm going to take a second to do it, so forgive me, is get a little best ball cheat sheet up on my other uh, screen because, sorry guys, um, I like having a, an idea of who's playing those important weeks, right? In week 16 and 17, who has a juicy mass matchup? So, um, this, these are the weeks that matter. These are when your guys need to be playing in high scoring games and you can expect them to do really well. So, uh, again, I like to have a little sidebar up of what those week 15, 16 and 17 schedules look like. So I have that up over here on another screen. And I would recommend you do the same if you're in a high stakes, uh, higher stakes entry like this. So let's just quickly look at some of the more fun ones uh arizona versus la rams in week 17 right that's fantastic both of those teams have a lot of great fantasy players houston and baltimore week 17 uh and everyone who plays best ball already knows this detroit and san francisco week 17 i mean these are juicy matchups to target right and so um yeah, they've got to do well in the quarterfinals and the semifinals, but if you want to win $100,000, they got to do well in week 17. So uh, half point PPR, I want to say that one more time because I do think that changes things. And this is about, you know, getting someone who can score uh, 20 plus points um, in a week. And so when you look at the build, three wide receivers, that's a lot of positions to fill. Only one flex, two running backs. Um, I really like to lean heavy a wide receiver as much as possible due to this fact that you have to fill three of them. So let's get into it. I mean, I'm going to talk through who I like as players um, as we get into the draft. I'll kind of analyze who's getting taken and if I would like them and if I got sniped and all that stuff. But uh, no time like the present uh yes sir take 20. Uh -oh. Oh, i don't think it worked Huh. Wonder why it's saying that. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing for just a second. Try and figure that out. Sorry guys. Um, I'm trying to think, how do I feel about the Jaguars this year? How do I feel about the Jaguars this year? Um, not better than I did last year. Like, I mean, that division's getting better. You know, the Titans are getting better. Uh, the Texans are getting better. And they just paid Trevor Lawrence a bunch of money. And I don't know if you get better uh, by just bringing in Brian Thomas. So we'll see. Uh, I am a Jags fan. I like them. I wish them well, but 
I don't love what's been happening uh, lately. So CJ Stroud's legit. Personal. What am I looking for? Why would it not be letting me? Oh, like location was kind of my guess. Hmm. All right, I'm going to try again. I'm just going to go back to underdog again. Okay. We're going to try this again. Okay, we're in. We're in. Jesus. Sorry, guys. Sorry, that was so <laughs> painful. <laughs> okay. So we're in. How do I feel about the Jaguars this year? I already answered that. But uh, I think we they could make the playoffs if... The Texans aren't as good as people think they will be. And um, the, the Titans suck. But I think the Titans could actually be kind of good. So I think, again, the bottom line is that's a tough division. There's four recently invested in quarterbacks all in that division. Uh, so it'll be fun to watch. And I'll actually be covering the AFC South for player profiler through their news team so that'll be fun so i'll be taking tracking the jaguars titans texans um all year all those teams and the colts so uh all right well, what are we doing we are waiting on three people so um Once that happens, this will randomly um, jumble us all up. Um, and we'll see where we are picking. I always do like to start a queue. So let's talk through it. Let's talk through the players. I would definitely usually lean Christian McCaffrey at 101. Sometimes I'll spice it up and take like Tyreek or CD. Um, but I actually do believe that Christian McCaffrey could be the 101 again this year. It's only half point PPR and he's just such a difference maker when you look at how much higher his projection is than every other, uh, player at wide receiver or running back. So worth that 101, I personally prefer Tyreek Hill in this format of half point PPR, um, where yardage is more of a premium. Long touchdowns are more of a premium. I like that a little bit more than the possession style of CD Lamb. I, you can call me crazy. Um, I promise there's a method to my madness. Now, that being said, if I'm on the clock, I might just decide uh, to pick CD Lamb. We never know. You just never know. So let's see. We've got our draft order. Um, I am at the eight slot, which I really like. I like being in this back spot where you can either get one of those top running backs, um, or you can have one of the best wide receivers fall to you. So we obviously want one of these top five wide receivers if we can get it. 
as I mentioned earlier, there's kind of a premium at having a high amount of wide receivers. So we're going to add these. We're just going to key these guys up. And I have Jesperson above Amon Ra personally. ADP does too, but there's been a lot of back and forth on that. Uh, and Jefferson's the kind of guy who might fall in a couple of drafts, but probably not in this one. But I have seen it happen, and I'd gladly scoop him up at the 108. If not, Bijan or Brees will be great. I'm going to pass on Puka and, and Brown just because I already have so many shares. So we've got Christian McCaffrey going at the 101, Lamb. And remember, the badges kind of hint at the experience of the players. Yes, your boy does not have a badge yet. Uh, and also, I guess it not maybe as many matches as they've played, but as much as they've invested or won is what these hint at. Jamar Chase going at the 103. Okay, so I'm on the pick. Uh, good practice, team meeting, guys. Anyways, can't fall for stuff like that. Priest is a beast. Um, you can expect him to get a lot of work through the air with Aaron Rodgers. I like him at the 108. I think you could argue he could be taken. He could be the RB1 this year. So you just got to um, trust your guns here. Again, you started a little bit of almost a disadvantage because um, now you have to make up for the wide receiver that you didn't take, right? But I feel comfortable in my ability to get that done. And I think that's the best player on the board and you don't want to waver with that just because of the structure. You don't want to trip and uh, pass on the best player that early. So. I'm sure the guys I want won't fall, <laughs> and I don't even want to start to queue them up, but I would love if Marvin Harrison fell in my lap. Just too much fun with a rookie with that much upside. I know some people will say they're out at the price tag. Uh, first off, I have not seen him falling where I would will or where I'll be at at 17. <laughs> um, look at all. Hall, twice as much upside as last year. I mean... Yeah, and I mean, Hall was great, but it's that he's got to stay healthy, right? Um, and and Aaron Rodgers has got to stay healthy. And that's a lot of ifs and buts. So uh, there goes Marvin Harrison. There goes Ayuk. I think I'm teeing up Miko. I just like Nico too much, dude. Too many big games. Nico's one of these guys who had too many very high end finishes. Uh, I'm willing to take a chance on Nico. I love Adams. I have a lot of Adams. Um, that would have been probably my other choice. But yeah, Hall twice as much upside as last year. As long as he stays healthy, um, if Rogers stays healthy, but Rogers would love to dump it off to him, I'm sure. So uh, I like starting with Hall. I'm not mad at it at all. Kind of that hero RB build. We definitely want to some good wide receivers to hopefully make it around back to us. God, I don't want to wait till 32. <laughs> it would be cool. I now won't lie. Like if Saquon fell, I'm taking Saquon. Um, 
I'm getting higher on Cooper Cup the closer it gets to the beginning of the year and the more he stays healthy. Malik Neighbors, again, just one of those rookies who borderline better than Marvin Harrison, in my opinion. That'd be cool if he falls. Personally, not a big Devontae Smith guy, so okay with missing him. Now, there's a likely situation here where, like, the ADP is going to fall where my wide receivers from Houston are. And I wouldn't double stack. I wouldn't stack the wide receivers, like, ideally. So now, but that's exactly what's happening, right? So, um, I know what my answer is going to be. I'm going to keep it a secret, and it's going to probably surprise some people. Yeah. So, like, let's go get Derrick Henry here. Um, Kyron, love Kyron, but this is half point PPR. I think Derek Henry, if Gus Edwards could score 13 touchdowns last year in that Baltimore Ravens, uh, Derek Henry can score 20 this year. Half point PPR knocks Pittman down. Tank Dell, I'm still wanting to see recover and get healthy before investing too much into it. I don't. I think it's too cute to expect to win a major championship uh, of like this with. Um, two two receivers like Tank Dell and Nico Collins on your same roster, um, and when Tank Dell's starting off, kind of with three wide receivers like Diggs, someone's not going to be able to eat there. You kind of have to draw a line in the sand, at least in each draft, in my opinion. Of okay, either Diggs is, is going to have the great year we want him to, but you can't expect all three of them to at their ADPs pay off. I love Dell. Diggs was already gone before he got to me, but uh, yeah, we'll just have to see what happens here. Keep fighting the good fight. We got four picks. Josh Allen, I really like him, and I like, I mean, if he could fall to, uh, yeah, we're doing it. We're taking Amari Cooper. I kind of figured he would take Pickens. I love Cooper. I mean, this guy just scored last year. He proved he could score a 50-point game. I do love ETN at this ADP. I would not touch Kirk at this ADP at halfway half PPR. Like, he just a guy who's kind of capped out at 20 points historically so we're gonna go get uh cooper who can go score 50 any given week i love I, I, his adp is kind of it is probably about appropriate but no hesitation there on my end i do like hurts i have a lot of hurts uh i kind of mentioned it at the top of the show like i don't want to get in a scenario where um I'm left with like Baker Mayfield and Will Levis as my quarterbacks. And just like, dude, that's, that's, doesn't even sound fun. So we'll not reach it on a quarterback here, but hopefully we'll find a good fit here um, at a decent ADP. So, and not be stuck with, I do like the idea of back at least around that tier of like Kyler Murray, I think is where it almost really starts to cut off after him. Then you start getting into like Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels of the world. And it's like a little too much uncertainty for me personally. So, um, I mean, not, I've, I've drafted them at those ADPs. Don't get me wrong, but let's see. Oh yeah. Dak. I'm taking Dak. Like Dak, this is where it starts to get a little risky. If you ask me though, like if after Jordan Love's gone, and even with Jordan Love, you're like, I'd love to have seen him like prove it for a couple of years before I uh, just all of a sudden. 
like build a whole team around him as my hero. Um, so seven picks. Lamar is kind of falling. Someone took Andrews. He's back or he's up next. Watch him complete this stack here. He's going to uh, Mark Andrews, Lamar Jackson. <laughs> it's like bing and boom. <laughs> now, this guy was kind of interesting. He took Kirk and Brown when he could have taken Brown and Mahomes and done a little stack. So I do like the idea of stacking. I really like the idea of stacking like that for weekly winners. Personally, I think that makes way more sense than people kind of hyping up stacking. Uh, so we'll definitely take a guy like Mahomes if he's going to like fall to 56, uh, which he didn't. And then, um, this has been my kind of sneaky pick. I, I'm almost hesitant to queue up my guys just in case whoever's watching is trying to snipe me. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Ah, I did. I got sniped. I got sniped. Um, so I might have to do what the people want here and take Anthony Richardson just to kind of solve that quarterback dilemma. Um, you know, I have wondered a lot of times when I pass on him what could have been. This is a $20 one. Put the money where the mouth is. Let's do it. Yeah, I just did that. I just drafted Anthony Richardson at ADP. I've been seeing him fall. I could have taken Stroud. Knowing my luck, Stroud was going to get sniped at the next uh, before I could get to him. So you just got to do what you got to do. So, again, Reed, I think there's too many, like, mouths to feed in that offense, and he's kind of more of a gadget guy who got banged up too much for me to be fully in on him. Um, Godwin, I like, I love that he's back in the slot. I think this is a little rich for half PPR best ball. Godwin's price personally, um, Mixon is a great option here, but I have two stud running backs already. Um, Stroud would be great. Again, I didn't want to risk that he was going to fall here. So, uh, all good. If he does, I will pass on him. Again, I don't think stacking is uh, the end of the world. In week 17, it could be really good. Uh, as we mentioned, they play the Ravens. So you've got some correlation here, right? You've got the Houston Texan or uh, Nico Collins versus Derrick Henry. Week 17. Okay. So we're up on one pick. Okay, so I am going, I like a lot of players. There's actually two I really like here. I am going to go with Romo Dunze. Um, just too intriguing to me. The upside, this is almost like Jamar Chase-like kind of territory where you've got a guy who's going in the top 10 and who got some, you know, oh, he's the third guy behind Boyd and um, Higgins. And then just week one shows you why he's going to finish top five. So he is, I do believe in the talent. I love DeAndre Hopkins around this range. I've been hammering him uh, all ADP in the, or all, all off season in like the 60s and 70s. But that's the thing is like, I haven't even had a chance to take Rome because I think so many people have been jumping at him. And this is about putting, you know, uh, some risk into the equation and taking some high swing upside guys with their third wide receiver who can hopefully surpass Keenan Allen and DJ Moore even. I do think he's a better prospect than both of those guys, right? So um, it's a risky pick, but I like the guy. I like the player. And this is another thing. See, like I think sometimes I see the market react to kind of how I feel is like, CJ Stroud doesn't have the rushing upside that I would want, like that Richardson has. Um, DeAndre Hopkins is at least going to fall into the 70s sometimes, which hardly happens with Odunze. So there's just 
part of me that holds out hoping there goes DeAndre Hopkins. Part of me holds out hoping though that maybe he'll make it back to me, right? And then I can have a chance to get him in like pick eighty and he just falls off a bus. Uh but that hasn't been happening a lot. So let's talk about optimal builds while we're waiting for the next pick. Um, typically, it's like two to three quarterbacks, five to seven running backs, six to eight wide receivers, and two to three tight ends. So I kind of like that, like two, six, eight, two, uh, or two, six, seven, three. I do like doing three tight ends. Uh, because t tight ends are very touchdown dependent. And so even a George Kittle, I like this. I like George Kittle here actually, because uh, he can just put up a hundred yards and it's half point PPR uh, where yards, and there he goes, there goes George Kittle. Uh, but they are more touchdown dependent positions. And so we'll just have to stack up a couple of them to give you a chance every week to at least put 10 points on the board. That's kind of my, my thoughts with tight end is that you want a couple of those guys out. So, uh, all right, we're three picks away. We've got, I mean, Alvin Kamara is one of my favorite players period. So, um, and what are we at pick 80, man, this is a rough, this is a rough range. you start to get in that like zero RB territory. I'm kind of happy with that pick. With him taking Jamison there, it leaves three guys that I could live with. There goes Watson. So you kind of just have to deal with the cards you're dealt here, right? Like I would love Kamara or Ingram. I'm not even going to force myself to decide. Uh, and I think I'm leaning Ingram as much as I love Kamara. But this is half point PPR. Ingram is kind of shown to be more of like a possession guy who I really like in DraftKings where it's full PPR. Let's see who we got. Who's he going to take? Nobody, neither of them. Okay, so now I have my choice of one of my favorite players. I mean, if you look at this, I have him ranked 45, right? But I don't want to miss the bus with um, Evan Ingram and at tight end and just be picking from crappy tight ends. I'm not taking Keon Coleman. I'm going in. I'm getting my guy, Kamara. This is a $20 entry. I love him too much. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. Let's go. Uh, seven picks away. So we are going to start looking at – we're definitely going to queue up Ingram if he stays. There he goes. That's a good value, I guess, getting him at – let's see, did he only have one uh, tight end? No, yeah, that's his second tight end. He takes Ingram. This is an interesting build. I'm not hating on it, but interesting. I hope Anthony Richardson can stay healthy. That's obviously going to be a big factor with this particular lineup that I'm putting together here. Um, four picks away. Keon Coleman is falling out of a bus, and I'm not going to save him. I mean, if he falls into the 90s, uh, tell me your thoughts in the chat. Is Keon, Keon Coleman even any good? Like, or is he about to fall off a bus here? <laughs> um, Ferg, I see the top. The, and the thing I can't come around with on Ferguson is, like, I like Bowers – and Ninjoku more. So why would I reach? Um, I know who I'm taking if he falls to me, but you guys are going to call me an old, you're going to call me a boomer if you see who I take. Uh, and he falls to me. I'm not going to say it until it happens. This guy's going to snipe me. I'll tell you if he snipes me. I'll let you know. Let's see, guys. Am I about to get sniped? I did not get sniped. I am taking old man, old goat. What did I say? Keon Coleman has fallen off a bus, and I am not about to get him. 
this is a guy who can put up uh, 30 points in any given week. So we got to go with James Conner. Um, I am basically set at wide receiver or running back now. That's the way I'm looking at this. I mean, between these four guys, you can expect that three or four should be almost cracking 20 points and getting in your lineup. So uh, nothing wrong with that at all. There's a kind of a tear break at wide receiver here, in my opinion. This is how I've been playing all my drafts. Is I would have loved to have maybe have one or two more wide receivers, obviously, always. Um, but I do think the difference between Keon Coleman and then the next tier of like Joshua Palmer's or Steve Shahid's, I could keep going. There's some wide receivers after that that I like. So I don't mind loading up on my running backs here where they are in the draft. Like people are, and, and if they're passing on them, then take them. Uh, and then, yeah, keep moving. So we've got 10 picks till I'm up, four wide receivers, three running backs, no tight end. Anthony Richardson. So I'd love to get a little Anthony Richardson, like someone at quarterback who's potentially good enough to make it not totally dependent on him or my team falls apart, <laughs> right? Because uh, he's very prolific from fantasy football perspective, but then he gets hurt a lot. So let's see who gets taken. I have a guy I want. I'm I'm so lame about this stuff, guys. I don't even say who I want. Like I don't want to tell you guys because I'm like I want to see him fall, and I don't want to put it out there and then put his name in the queue for someone. So it's like I'll tell you it's the guy I want to get taken. Uh, but there's definitely someone who I think like as I'm building this team here fits exactly where I'm hoping. Um, what I need. So six picks away. That was not him, not Zach Moss. Gator. Yeah. I don't know if I have, I have my Anthony Richardson. I got a, I got a Gator. Uh, who else? Only one Gator, but still. Okay, G. Marshall takes Shahid. Daniels. My guy is still on the board. Let's go. David Njoku is a absolute baller. Uh, he's one of like my, I'd have him probably in the top seven tight ends this year. So to get him at this, when you're, you know, you've taken some jabs at building a hero RB room. <laughs> uh, and then fall right here where you can take him and shore up your tight end room and i mean you're getting him past his adp like in a in a 20 dollar draft where people are so sharp and normally i swear people will snipe you just because they see you're building a team that doesn't have a elite tight end or something so uh i think goddard is prolific too goddard's the type of guy who who, who could explode for 20 points um but uh he's yeah, sure they both struggled with injuries but i think joku's more of a tough guy and has shown a little bit more of a higher ceiling so um but look at this we are seeing a decent little run on wide receiver here uh, let's get this yes let's get this come on let's get it boys and girls uh <laughs> okay 
uh, I think I'm building a decent team here. We're, we got to be careful at wide receiver. I, I, I do think almost Raheem is too good to pass up to on here. I know I sound like a dang wide receiver fiend um, <laughs> or running back fiend, but it's like getting Raheem Mostert, who finished like top two or three in half point PPR and pick 113. Like, I just, it seems ridiculous. And I'm, I can't figure out any other way but to. Yeah, exactly. Like, do, do I hate wide receivers? Like, I'm just like, it's not that I hate them. It's that I think I can find someone else who can, like, pop for 15. There you go. See, Mostert can't. Like, that, that guy Greg, got a great value. It just was unreal. Um, <laughs> I couldn't even – I was like, what is going on? So, yeah, I uh, I do not hate wide receivers. I think you're actually about to see my strategy here. So – I personally just think like Brandon Cooks and Jacoby Myers right here. These two guys like are all, they're wide receiver twos, um, and they're they're kind of like my guys that 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 kind of wide receiver two range. So I think this is a guy who's shown he can score thirty plus points any given week. He didn't really he didn't have a great season with. Um, Dak last year, but I didn't really expect him to. I don't know how to say that. Jacoby Myers is another guy. You saw him go right after me. I think that's a sharp pick. I'm kind of yin and yang between them, but I have uh, more Jacoby Myers exposure, and I do think they are going to be a bit run heavier team. And I think that Dallas, uh, Dallas versus Philly, Week 17. Again, we kind of got to shoot for the stars with some of these builds. So I really like him as like a wide receiver too that kind of starts to fill in is building that second half of your wide receiver two room. Again, I feel pretty set at that this running back room. But yeah, I would have struggled to not take um Mostert if he fell to me there. I can't lie. I mean it's just like too 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 tantalizing. Let's go subscribe if you like the content. Come on, guys. I hope you're having fun. Best thing I can do on a Saturday night and a little high-stakes fantasy drafting. Okay, we're eight picks away. Johnny hates wide receivers and loves crusty RVs. Uh, Yes, this is a fact. I, I might name this team like one last hurrah. I love doing that. One. Like, you know, like you got the Amari Coopers, Brandon Cooks, Joku, Connor, Kawara, Henry. It's like, did this guy just get out of a time machine? Does he think football is play, being played in the year 2019? <laughs> oh, good stuff. Okay, but we're doing decent with with our build overall. One four one is a solid structure. Um, we want to start trying to identify some solid. Does Johnny <laughs> does Johnny play football or a fantasy funeral home? I mean, this look like the morgue out here, right? I mean, dude, Derek Henry's a beast, though. I think he. I think all three of these guys. I'm willing to watch him fall off before I stop believing in him. They all showed the ability to crack the top 10 last year. Um, Cooper, same, you know, so Cooks, Joku. This is definitely the average age of this team is for the old. <laughs> Let's see. Four picks away. Start to look at the other builds around you, like this guy Bear Bun has been passing up on tight end a lot. Okay, guys. Sorry, I'm being quiet because it's suspenseful, isn't it? Um, 15 seconds till I'm up. I have an idea who I want to take. I have two people in who I would take. And uh, 
we'll see if what Remy Boy Lewis says to me. Okay, so he took Jerome Port, who was my choice B. My choice A here is going to be Trevor Lawrence at ADP. Uh, this is a nice bargain, getting him at one full 18 when his ADP is 118. And uh, yeah, I think you know you start getting into the Kirk Cousins and the Matthew Staffords and the uh, what's it called to the world, um, Aaron Rodgers. Lawrence has shown an ability to use his legs. Uh, right now, Mike, what are you right now? Um, so yeah, this is. I'm going to hear, wait, I'm going to give me some live, live. I want to get some feedback from the live audience here. Okay. I'm going to turn my, this off and we're going to switch audio in here. So you guys like the sound better. Okay. Can you hear me? How does it sound? Give me some feedback. Light up the chat. Does this sound better? Do we prefer the other way? Does it matter? Am I just talking into a black hole? No one will ever know. Okay, we're five picks away. We got to start thinking about our next kill. Gabe Davis goes. He was just in my mind of someone who I might stack. What about the Saints? I think the Saints will probably have um, – this is brutal to say out loud. Might have Spencer Rattler as our quarterback not too late in the season. I think um, what's-his-face could struggle, Carr could struggle, and I don't think their team is going to be that great. But on the clock now, as you can see, I have him ranked pretty high, Jahan Dotson. Again, another wide receiver, too, in an offense. McCaffrey has to learn the NFL. They drafted him, but they, they don't have a lot behind them. There's McLaurin, but I think Dotson is going to get – this is going to be a good thing. He's optimistic about the offense. So am I. I'm totally willing to take a shot on him at the 137 range um, with a new quarterback like Jaden Daniels. So I'm more excited for a team like – the commanders to be honest than I am the saints. I do love Kamara and I hope with their new offensive coordinator, they can scheme them up a little better. And I, but I, I'd love to see Rattler play and be like the next uh, Patrick Mahomes tape. Cause he does have that some, a little bit of similarities to his game, like Patrick Mahomes light. Right. So uh, those are my thoughts on the saints. I think, it's tough. I'm a Broncos fan. You know, sometimes you're not always at the top of the totem pole, right? So, um, okay, so we're starting to get this build looking real nice. We've got two. One quarterback with very solid draft capital. Well, both number one pick and number four pick. But I'm saying this guy's got a huge contract, so he we know he's their franchise. We know that they're going to play this guy, um, Anthony Richardson, as long as he's healthy. Four solid running backs. Five, I'd say five solid receivers. Um, really good tight end. So we've got a, a good skeleton here. So now it's starting to be about who are those difference makers you can target. I'm loving the board when I look at it. They, I'll be honest, any of these guys on this, like but probably besides Quentin Johnson and TJ Hawkinson, to be honest, 
uh, and even Nick Chubb. I want him to fall a little bit. I want people to like, I mean, 140 is a great ADP for a guy like Chubb, but I don't really need a running back here, right? I'm starting to try and take a, a, a shot on difference making wide receivers who are maybe being undervalued. And I think you see a couple on this board. Um, I'm five picks away, so I'm, I might be speaking too, too soon. I could get sniped. I probably will get sniped pretty hard here. Uh, but actually, people are going for players. Again, in, in half PPR, I don't know if I'm jumping at Douglas at that price. So um, to my my watchers, thank you for joining. Like, comment, subscribe to the page. Give me comments. I am putting them up on a show and talking fantasy with you guys, talking who I like at ADP, giving my brain to the public. I mean, and that's just a beautiful gift. So um, let's ride. <laughs> Dude, if Nick Chubb, if Nick Chubb <laughs> falls to me at 152 and I get sniped in the other directions that I'm looking, well, then I don't know what I'm going to do is my point. So um, Quentin Johnson, perfect. Get like now I can I don't have to say I slept on him. Um I'm one pick away. I'll put it like this. Either of these wide receivers I'm good with. I I think he'll probably take one of them. Stay on brand. Stay on brand. Take look, he took Chubb. He took Chubb. So this is such a tough decision to me because Darnell Mooney got money. He got Kirk Cousins throwing to him. He's almost got like that Addison role in a, in a good offense. Man, the more I talk through it, the more I like it. Uh, Burton, maybe a little higher upside. We're going to go Mooney here. Um, again, locked in for key role as a wide receiver too, catching from Kirk Cousins. Uh, has shown a history of being productive in the NFL. I love Jermaine Burton. My Jermaine Burton bags are a little full. Um, and I think that Mooney is the type of guy who can explode for 20 points. And I really want to see what uh, Zach Robinson can do on that offense. So this is going to be one of the more swing picks in this entire draft for me. If Mooney hits and is exploding for 20 points four or five times this season, then this pick pays dividends. Um, and that's kind of my thoughts with Cook, Stotson, and Mooney is like hopefully between the three of them, you're getting enough consistency f uh, from, you know, about what you want from about a wide receiver one. So um, where are we at, though? What, how, two, four, six, two. So we're getting near the end of the board. Uh, We'll just have to see what happens. Well, I'm up in three picks. Time to start having some hard decisions in my head. I'm looking at crusty people left and right. You guys talking about all my crusty players. I mean, this is a pretty crusty crowd of like uh, – 80, this is a miserable range, is my point. And I got sniped on Wandale. I was going to take Wandale for for my boss at the player profiler, Bradley Stalder, loves a good Wandale Robinson. We all love a good Wandale Robinson. Uh, this is brutal. It's brutal, but I'm going to do it, and there's nothing you guys can do about it. I'm taking Juba. I'm taking Juba. What are you guys going to do? Come at me. Roast me. It's half point PPR. I think I'm stopping at five wide, five running backs. It's an ugly ADP zone. This guy uh, had like how many rushing yards last year? Something crazy. Almost like a thousand, which is crazy for Chuba Hubbard, right? It's just like you don't want to give him that much credit, but. Uh, I liked it too because I liked that there's like almost some bi bi week correlation where I think I can 
live with these two out week 11, live without these two week tw uh, 12, but then have them most weeks. So, and hopefully Henry's resting and Nico and Jahan and all them. Anthony Richardson resting week 14 before a nice glorious run for my 100K. This is looking good. This is looking real good. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts in the chat. Uh, is my roster trash? Is it gas? Uh, who are your favorite picks at ADP this offseason? I'd love to hear some of your guys' thoughts. This is this is going slow too. I mean, this draft is like uh, I told my wife I would be less than an hour. I'm probably gonna have to be sleeping on the couch tonight, boys. Just hopefully, I'm just kidding. She's very sweet. <laughs> um, okay, so we're seven picks away. Man, that 15 seconds would have been crazy. We would have been done 10 times by now, I bet. Seven bits away. I never like to plan too early. Uh, because I, yeah, people will take who you like. And... I like to start thinking a couple picks away who are kind of my A, B, and C options. I mean, I always have an idea of how it would go chronologically, but that's the thing. It's like, why start queuing up people who you know they're going to take? Uh, high stakes, 100K on the line here. $20 entry. This is the big boy tournaments, boys and girls. What do we got? Okay, I'm up next. This is a tough range. The Marcus Robinson's been creeping up. I mean, this 170 range makes sense, but it's wild. Corley, I like. I can't get behind it uh, just yet. Michael Wilson may, may would have been high on my list. Let's do it. Let's have some fun. Three straight years of 87 targets. I mean, is the guy at least, if nothing else, consistent for you all? Uh, I think we're at the spot of the draft where we don't have crazy needs. So we're not reaching. We're just taking players who we like. And Conklin is going to a very tight end friendly spot with Aaron Rodgers. I've got the correlation with Brees Hall. I thought about that before I made the pick. So I kind of just like that. And um, yeah, this is a fun part of the draft where I think we're good with two QBs. We're, we're good. We could be good here with two um, tight ends. We could be good at really at any position as we almost are because of the way it's built. So now you really just get to pick based on who are the best players that kind of fall to you and, and that you like and you kind of maybe have some correlation for your team, right? So um, I do like Will Levis. I think they're going to throw that ball a lot this year. But I have so many um, – Titans builds 
because they are so cheap and he just doesn't really even correlate with anyone on this. Maybe he does. Let's see. Who did the Titans play in week? Uh, Jacksonville. Week 17. Okay. Um, so they do play Jacksonville in week 17. To could be a shootout there. I kind of like the idea of taking here too sometimes. Uh, uh, yeah, we're taking Luke McCaffrey because we've got John Dotson, and I do think one of those guys emerges, and maybe they play a little ping pong throughout the season of who does better, and. Uh, that's the fun part is you get to play a little back and forth. There's some Duval in this build in there. We got Sunshine, Travis, Trevor Lawrence. I think that's our only Duval, but... It's some beautiful Duval. My beautiful wife. Let's go. I'm almost done, honey. We're we're cranking this out. Comment guys, who do you think what do you think I need to round out my team? Be honest, Darius Slayton is always good for 20 points once or twice a season. Very interesting pick. Let's change it. Oh, oh, I don't like that as much. Uh-oh. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Let's change it up just a little bit. Change it up just a wee bit. Okay, so we got five picks away till I'm up. May is a bye week, the same week as Richardson, which is kind of rough. I think I'm just going to live with these two at quarterback because I invested such a high pick in Richardson and because he has a rushing floor where a lot of some quarterbacks you worry, you're like, man, is this guy at least, is he going to have some weeks where he's scoring six points? That As long as he's out there, he will be scoring. Um, again, this whole build is kind of contingent on him staying healthy. So we're not going to get try and get too cute and take a, lot, a quarterback here. I do like Drake May. I think this could be a really good uh, ADP for him. Let's see what else we're dealing with at tight end. So Drake May did fall. But let's have a conversation about how good Jelani Woods was in the uh, raw athletic score. So this guy is a freak athlete. This is a total upside pick here. Uh, this is correlation with um, your boy Anthony Richardson because he's the tight end who's hopefully going to be catching those touchdown passes from Anthony Richardson. I, I've been smashing Jelani Woods at, around this range all season. So, uh, yeah, there's a story. I'm sticking to it. And um, let's ride, boys and girls. Let's ride. Okay, we're down to our last pick. We are down to our last pick. And some of the guys I've liked from the wide receiver room have gotten taken. 
I do think there's a likelihood I could stop at a seven wide receivers here. Let me take a quick look. Please left. Rondell Moore's interesting. Also having him with Mooney. We'll just have to see who I draft, huh? Last pick. Last pick. Okay. Again, this is about uh, – we're going to go get a wide receiver we like. Okay, we're going Audric Estime. We're doing it. You never know. I didn't think we needed a wide receiver. I didn't like what was out there. I've drafted too much Odell this offseason. Um, I am not convinced that um, that what's-his-face will be um, – Javante Williams will be their starting running back. I think he could he could get uh, benched, cut, major a ton of things, and I think Estime has to get drafted because he's the type of guy who could score two or three touchdowns in a game, week 15, 16, 17, in a meaningless matchup. So wasn't going to let him slip through the cracks. Uh, I've really struggled with that pick because I have – so many stud running backs who I think I'm going to be getting them filling my flex most of the time. And my bigger question is, am I going to be able to put up three solid wide receiver spots? But you have to stand by your picks. And I didn't think a lot of difference makers existed out there at that um, end of the draft range. See, I mean, Odell still hasn't gotten picked which is wild. And I think if you really do look at the optimal builds, these are the right, this is the range you want to be in five to six running backs, six to eight wide receivers, two to three tight ends, two to three quarterbacks. So um, we are complete. We are complete. We are complete. Uh, let us go and look at some exposures, huh? Look at this 37 teams. Fun stuff. I don't think it has the updated 20, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for joining me tonight. And um, it's been a pleasure. It's been an absolute pleasure. So um, wait, let me see real quick. I'm going to pull that entry back up and we'll look at it. Let's show you the final product. Okay, here it is. Um, the Pitbull. Anthony Richardson and Lawrence at quarterback, a little AFC South low down there. Brees Hall, Derrick Henry, Kamara, Connor, Hubbard, Estime. Solid running back room. Collins, Cooper, Odunze. Cooks, Dotson, Mooney, McCaffrey. Always fun when you can say you have a McCaffrey on your team, right? Uh, Njoku, Conklin, and Jelani Woods. So I like, again, let's review some of the things I personally like that I can stand by. Tight ends are the most touchdown position or dependent position. So you've got three who could on any given week score a touchdown and get you close to scoring 10 points. Uh, and a guy like Njoku who offers the upside and showed you multiple times last year, he can score 20 plus points. So I like, I, I'd grade this group pretty high. Actually, you got a good sleeper tight end an established that and an upside guy. Uh, 
wide receivers. Nico is a bit of a risky one with the mouths to feed there. Uh, I think he's one of the most talented players in the league. He offers a ton of upside. Same with Cooper. Same with Odunze. Uh, Cooks has shown a ton of production. And again, the ability to score 20 or 30 points in a game. So is Dotson. Uh, first round pick. Mooney has been very productive. You know, I, I, I wonder how this would look different with um, Jermaine Burton here, but that was, I do like Mooney here a little better um, because, again, this is a guy who was very productive when he was in the right offense that Chicago Mooney was, but now is in a new offense that hopefully will use him correctly. And then you've got Luke McCaffrey, who I kind of like him as almost a handcuff to Dotson of like, one of these guys is going to have a 20 point game, probably both of them, multiple times throughout the year. So when one of them doesn't, um, then the other one will be in the line or will, you know, that's the beauty of best ball. One of them goes in your lineup, one of them doesn't. So uh, I love the roster. I would grade this pretty highly. I do think maybe I could have gone one less running back and live with five. And then, um, loaded up on maybe one more wide receiver earlier, something like that. But um, at the end of the day, wide res- running backs get a lot of injuries. They don't always score 20 points in a game, you know? So uh, I think this is about right. So thank you guys for watching. I think, I hope you guys enjoyed and wouldn't it be cool if this was the, um, this was the one that, won 100k right and we all got to look back at this and say hey what was that build what did it look like again so uh and you know it's always those weird ones like audric estime scoring two touchdowns in week 17 or something crazy uh that very unlikely to happen but they separate your team from the pack and push you over the top so that was a bit of a weird pick at the end there kind of went down to the wire I was looking for Greg Dorch as well. I like Greg Dorch as a like dart throw at the end of the draft if you need another wide receiver. Um, but I feel good about my wide receiver room. It'll definitely depend on some factors like Odunze and Cooks and Dotson being productive, right? Uh, those are kind of guys who it's like they've shown they can uh, at different levels at different times, right, between the three of them. So, uh this is the beauty of it is kind of watching it all unwind from here, right? Now you, the season goes by, you get to see who scored what. And um, yes, the pit bull, let's go. Uh, this is the big one, right? $20 entry, almost near their best ball mania. I do plan to do some best ball mania drafts closer to the season. I might do one here soon and even stream that who knows. Uh but I love that this is a low entry, lower prizes, but that's okay. Like I'm, I'm really in it to win it. Uh, I want to get a big victory under my belt. So that'd be cool to win one of these 20,000 entrant ones for a significant uh, jackpot. So uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Talk about the team. Tell me who's going to win. Uh, ooh, I like it. Estimate to close out. That's right. You get, it's a it's a funky pick. I definitely was already flush at running back, but like draft a guy you think is going to score twenty five in week seventeen, right? Uh, and like I think uh, Liam, the guy who got best ball mania a couple years ago, said something like that that he had Trey McBride in one of his DraftKings lineups that won big for him when he was like a rookie or something like that, and you know very low rostered, very low owned guy like that back then when he was behind Zach Ertz at the time. But those are the, if they show some flashes in college, like think about what Dr. Audric Estime did last year at Notre Dame. And uh, yeah, he could, he could pop off for a thousand yards this year if they get rid of Javante Williams. So uh, definitely a high upside pick there at the end. So thanks for watching guys like comment, subscribe to the show. Tell me, what you liked about the roster, what you do different, and uh, follow me on Twitter at Fantasy Picasso. And uh, thank you for watching. Have a good night.